Thank you for joining us wherever you are. This podcast episode is brought to you by the Old Ways Actual Play team. This actual play uses the 5th edition Vampire the Masquerade tabletop role-playing rules by World of Darkness. This actual play is performed by adults and in an adult setting. Listeners should know that this podcast is intended for a mature audience and will include strong language and mature themes. All content, including names, places, events, companies, and so forth, that may bear resemblance to entities living, dead, or undead, is strictly coincidental. My name is Rena Henzi, and for tonight's game, I will be your storyteller. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Old Ways podcast, Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, Shards of San Francisco. I am your storyteller, Storyteller Rena, and tonight we are getting a look into what happens when a bunch of vampires get together to have a Valentine's party. I'm sure nothing's going to go wrong there. But as usual, I would like to thank all of our listeners for all of your support and all of our Patreon backers for your additional support. Uh, if you would like to support us through the Patreon, you can do so at patreon.com slash the old ways podcast, where you'll find a lot of extra delights, including some vampiric ones. Um, but thank you all in general for all that you do for us in the show. So before we get into our party shenanigans for the night, we need to do some introductions. So to my right. Hi, this is Mike, and I play Marcus Voss of Clan Bruja. Our visiting Baron at the party. And next to Mike. Hi, this is Tegan, and I'm playing Rom the Shaman of Clan Malkavian. That's right. We no longer have our resident Tremere. And at the end of the table. Hi, this is Ali, and I play Katarina Bogdanovich, and I am trapped on a boat. You are. You are. It's going to be great. No social interactions whatsoever, I'm sure. And next to Allie. Hello, hello. My name is Bridget, and I am playing Monica West of Clan Salubri. Indeed. Normally, I would say last but not least, but uh, not tonight. So next to Bridget, we have... This is Tiffany, and I play Alex Giovanni, and uh, I locked myself in my room. Yes, Alex has a case of the sads. For some reason. No idea what. And now, last but not least, we have our special guest for the evening. Oh, goodness, a special guest. Hello, I'm uh, Patrick McNamara of Dog Food Studios, um, and I will be playing Roger Pendley Funt. Wonderful. All right, so let us get into the events of this not at all momentous occasion. So, Rom has set up the party. For Valentine's night, most of the Temple of Michael is aboard his yacht, the Spear of Michael. Baron Voss and Katarina have put in an appearance. And uh, as have Monica and her sire, Chase. And Alex Giovanni is sulking off somewhere in the boat due to information they received just a few moments ago. Rom was about to cast off to go on this uh, blood cruise around the bay when one final vehicle pulled up. At the dock, an outstepped one Sir Roger Pentley Funt, the whip of Clan Malkavian. Sir Roger, this is your first visit to the newly independent territory, the Port of San Francisco. You were invited to a Valentine's event by Ram the Shaman, and uh, you decided, for some reason, known only to yourself at the moment, that you would attend this particular event. So you are standing on the dock, looking up at a very ostentatious yacht very ostentatious with the name Spear of Michael emblazoned on the side and standing on the deck is Rom the Shaman who's positively glowing almost literally as he sees you step out of the vehicle I, I duly step out of my vehicle and, uh, and dismiss my driver and, uh, and I, I give a short wave there's nothing, nothing out of the, nothing, uh, nothing too over the top, but just a raising of the hand. And I say, Ram, good to see you again. It's, uh, it's me. It's Roger Pendley Funt. We, uh, we've made acquaintances previously. 
Yes, we have. I am so glad that you're here. And of course, I'm shouting down the gangplank because if they're still down there coming on, on the way up. You are in for a treat tonight. Oh, well, I, I mean, I do enjoy tweet, treats. Uh, may I say, uh, Ram, that you are considerably, considerably more radiant than the last time I saw you. That is an astute observation, I must say. Yes. I have, um, in the past several months, come into the acquaintance of a particular group, and it is doing wonders for my skin, honestly. I am so excited. I mean, it shows. You're, you're positively glowing. I, I've known few people who have uh, who have joined a cult and and then become better looking it's it's not a cult may i um <clears throat> may i offer up uh, my opinion uh wrong since this seems to be a matter of controversy it is indeed a cult yes oh well i mean like i've said before what's not a cult well Indeed. I mean, is not the theater a cult? Is not, uh, you know, is not the continuing and bewildering fan base of Mr. William Shakespeare a cult? Certainly the only explanation that makes sense to me uh, for his continued prominence. So I I judge you not for being in the cult realm. I think it's a perfectly acceptable way to send, spend one's time. And I am not of a religious fan to myself. But certainly an appreciation for the beliefs of others is, is very important. Well, I appreciate that. If you're being so tolerant and you're out here visiting our little, um, oh God, I don't want to run afoul of Marcus. I can't use the word fiefdom. Our special protective area out here, then you are obviously a man of culture. A man of culture indeed. As you can see, arrayed before you on these decks, and in the back, by the way, you have got to check out the pool. But as you can see arrayed on these decks is a number of snacks and a number of snacks. So if you need anything, please let me know. By the way, how is the rest of the clan doing? You know, as... As well as can be expected, given the perhaps precarious circumstances that we find ourselves in. I, yeah, I, it's, it's curious you mentioned that indeed this, uh, this independent area has been declared, uh, by, I believe it's now Baron Voss. Would I be correct? I wouldn't call him Baron to his face. I, you know, Boss Voss. Works good boss, for me. Boss. Yes. I mean, Absolutely. the acquisition of a title, often the first great mistake of leadership. So I appreciate that uh, that Boss Voss has uh, decided to eschew the title of Baron for now. I don't think he's one for feudalistic titles, but I take it that you are holding on to the whipdom of Clan Malkavian quite fine under the new circumstances and leadership? Well, you know, Ram, I'm I'm not a great one for titles, and really my first love is the theatre. But if I can stand as any form of, of comfort and indeed direction for a, a clan that so often requires it, that is all that is required for me now on the occasions in which uh, the clan is perhaps heading the wrong way perhaps uh, I am able to put a hand on the tiller occasionally indeed even a stern one but certainly uh, no no titles for me no I, uh, I I just help where I can well it's so good that the clan has a Captain Sully figure like yourself well oh, but we, speaking of captains, I believe that I should be calling you Captain Rob now. Well, I mean, you certainly can. I don't want to place myself in any sort of hierarchy, but this is my boat, and these are my people, and I am 
in a good place. Let's say here. Well, it warms my heart to hear that, Ram. Uh, you you certainly seem to have improved your lot since the last time we spoke. It seems like there's, if you'll indulge me, a yacht going on. There is. <laughs> If you'll allow me to indulge in a in a in a, a pun or wordplay, where I have uh, I have substituted the word yacht for a lot. I don't want you to think that this is a place where you can't indulge yourself, and I want you to know that just because I'm no longer under your whippiness, is that so? that you are not absolutely near and dear. To me and my efforts here. So please enjoy yourself. Have a good evening. Well, I appreciate so much, Ram, for your informing me that my influence over you has waned. I would, uh, I would hate to be in a position where I assumed it was there, that I was uh, where it was not. And I am delighted in your newfound independence, Ram. May it bring you every pleasure. Uh, Captain Ram, I should say. Although I am once again reminded that the first great failure of leadership is often the acquisition of the title. For sure. But look, as I leave you to go wander the party, I just want you to know that now you can trust that when I give you kind words, when I do favors for you, that it's no longer because you are in a position of power, but because I genuinely enjoy your company. And you can rest safe in that knowledge. Well, indeed, Ram. And I will, if uh, I, I hope, I, I shan't keep you too long, for you have other guests to speak to, of course. But I, I should like to pick your brain about an issue uh, later on at the party, should you find a gap in your schedule. Absolutely. I will endeavor to do so. Uh, well... I uh, I shall mingle and e- explore the yacht. Uh, there's a yacht of things uh, to see. Enjoy your 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 current status as greeter, and I will. Uh, but do find me later on, Ram, if it pleases you, and and we'll we'll chat more. I hope this event buoys your spirits. Oh, indeed. And Roger simply uh, sort of drifts into the party. The the boat at this point has cast off its moorings, so to speak. Uh, Rom, your tribe has gotten everything underway. And so the the yacht is now moving at a slow but enjoyable pace around the bay on this long cruise. There's music playing, several different kinds of music from different rooms. There's multiple vampires and humans uh, wandering around the boat, drinking various things and some very interesting sounds coming from other parts of the boat. So, Marcus and Katerina, after saying hello to Rom, uh, what, what would be your next uh, stop on this particular party event? Well, I think we'd like to investigate what's here. At least visually. Uh, I'm being probably fairly careful about who gets close that sort of thing. Um, and I'm probably doing a lot of listening. We'll just say a, a careful ear. There's quite a bit going on. Katarina, you are not enjoying how noisy it is, I would assume, because there are a lot of people of various types in very close quarters. And it, you haven't catered a party in quite some time. And you're not used to boats either. So... It is very crowded in some areas, and you steer around those. Not quite safe to get too close to the crowds, but you see a lot of Bruja here. Uh, Fuzzy and his gang, uh, his biker gang of Oakland Bears, are having some fun with uh, the leather scene in one room as you walk past. It looks like they're having a good time. There's a few gangrel around. Marcus, you notice a couple pigeons sitting on the railing, just watching things. Ed- Edgar's there, and he coos at you as you walk past. I will um, nod very slowly at the pigeon. Specifically Edgar. 
specifically Edgar. And it's it's mostly Anarchs and Independents here, but there are some Toreador. Katarina, you see some of your own clan who just sort of nod slowly at you. A few of them just sort of raise an eyebrow and lift a glass, but uh, they don't really pay you much attention. And there's no Tremere, hardly surprising, but uh, there, there are a few Malkavians also wandering around. So Roger will also see them. Uh, they all nod respectfully at Marcus and also at you, Sir Roger. And everyone just seems to be having a good time. So far, you haven't heard any business being discussed or, or anything of that sort. It just appears to be partying at the moment. Interesting. I would probably note Alex's absence, given that this is their thing. I suppose I expected to see them. Yes. Uh, once you briefly moved along, Alex, once you got the news and also figured out uh, a few things about what happened with Vince, you just went off to your quarters that Rom set up for you. Yeah, I'm probably like just laid out on my like chaise, but not to wrinkle my black and red appropriately themed suit, but you know, probably just sitting in my room. Uh, you hear the music outside a little bit just from your door because while there, part of the room is that's closed off by another door is soundproofed as you requested the main bedroom part isn't it, it's it's a little weird for you just all the noise and the and the music and the sounds of talking and other things going on and you don't feel like participating which is very strange for you but Mina's not here anymore Ever since you went into that apartment and Mina said something was wrong, you haven't felt her around. You've got her book, but she didn't come with it. And you don't know what that means for her. Yeah. If uh, Luther makes an appearance tonight, I will ask him if he can check on her. Luther pops in just for a second when you think of him. He has an uncanny knack of doing that. <laughs> One of the things that made him a good sheriff when he was still a vampire. And he just sort of nods at you and he disappears. He looks a bit sad, you'd say. Me too. Yes. Which might surprise you a little bit because you'd sort of written Vince off in your head just because of everything he was going through, but it still bothers you. Yeah, part of me was hoping that he would bounce back. Like, logically, Alex, because Alex has probably seen it several times, like, a lot of people, a lot of vampires don't come back, but I guess they were hoping that, you know, it would be different, that, like, we could figure something out, but... Nope. So Alex is wallowing a little bit in their ennui. Meanwhile, Monica and Chase, you are a bit surprised, perhaps, by just how luxurious everything is, because you're used to keeping a low profile, being a salubri, and this is very much not low profile for anybody. There's gilt edges on things. You pass rooms that have really heavy velvet curtains. And there's lots of hardware, very expensive hardware in, in various places. Vampires and the humans are mixing fairly normally. You assume they're ghouls, these humans. Hard to tell, but the vampires are all moving around and mixing with them without bothering to hide anything. You see one Toreador uh, laughing with a young man and then just leaning over and biting his neck right there in the middle of everybody. And it's just, it's, it's all a bit ostentatious for you. And Chase looks down at you and whispers, well, not really our kind of scene, is it, dear? Monica works these scenes. Would this be more like actually her wheelhouse? Not like something that she personally enjoys, but like, I imagine she's finally at work for the first time and after a month. This is like, oh my God, yes, I'm back on the clock. This is great. Right. So it, it feels like normal in a little, 
in a bit of a way to you. Things haven't felt normal, right? It's just odd seeing so many vampires out in the open doing vampire things with humans around. You're used to catering, or not catering, but working at uh, more toned down events. Uh, but it does feel good to you to be back in this kind of environment. Yeah, like it's not that she's giddy, but she's reconnecting with a professional passion that was stripped from her five weeks ago. So like she made the intentional choice not to show up to this party in this gorgeous black and red ballroom gown that she could have been in. And she's in her paramedic outfit because she is she's so excited to connect with something that resembles some degree of normalcy. Uh, the other thing that she's really struggling with right now, she keeps playing with that line of being flagrant with her affections towards Chase and then talking herself off of that ledge and then going back onto that ledge. Um, and at some point, she's just going to say, I'm I'm going to do a quick circuit of the boat and see if I can get a temperature back on the Kindred. It's been a while since I've done that. Because again, she, it's not like she has a lot of friends in the Kindred circle. Most of her social activity was like in these events. And it was usually on like the peripheral, like, like absorbing the gossip in the conversation. Uh, so I am going to do that. And then I need to find the Baron. And then you and I need to have a conversation. You said you've been to a party like this before. And her two eyes are super flirtatious and playful. The third eye is not fucking around. The third eye is pure accusatory glare where she's being like playful and cute. Chase's third eye just gives you a, a sort of playful wink. He doesn't seem bothered by the intensity. This, well, I'm older than you, dear. Keep that in mind. Two eyes do a playful eye roll because she thinks that's cute. The third eye is not is not here to play. The third eye is pissed. The third eye has questions. The third eye is going to get some resolution uh, to what the fuck that meant and what he did. He leans in and he cups your face with both hands and he kisses you on the nose and he just says, I have friends in various temples of Michael around the continent, let's just say. And they know how to show a fellow a good time. You should check it out sometime. Well, I might just check it out tonight. And she's just going to very quickly bump up and do the cheek to cheek kiss and then spin and leave. Just be warned, they do have some tendencies you might not, and you don't hear the rest of it as you turn around a corner. <laughs> Sir Roger, as you're wandering around the boat, looking at all of this ostentatious frippery, uh, you see something interesting. You see a salubri in a paramedics uniform come careening around the corner. So Roger's immediately intrigued, not so much by the, the third eye, because one doesn't like to stare, but uh, by the uh, by the paramedic's uniform. He, he approaches sort of respectfully and, and looks you in your, in your uh, more mundane pair of eyes, being unsure as to the etiquette of the situation, and nod gracefully, and a short bow, but doesn't approach you unless it seems like you would like him to. I think if she was just turning that corner, she's on a flirtatious high. So she was probably mid giggle as she whipped around that corner. And then she's face to face with this Malkavian or actually just this kindred that she doesn't know. She goes, oh, hi. Greetings. Uh, pleasure to make your acquaintance. My name's Roger Pendley Font. Does that name mean anything to me, storyteller? So you would know the name just because Chase tries to keep or tried to keep track of all the power structures when you were still living in Camarilla territory you know the name is associated with the Malkavian whip you've never met him you don't really know anything about him you just know he's the the whip for clan Malkavian in Camarilla territory so she's on her way to extend a hand out to you very casually very conversationally until you drop the full name and then she retracts her hand she takes uh takes a step back and she actually bows and she's like hi um, it's a pleasure to meet you, Monica West, Clan oh. Salubri, as you can probably see. Oh, please, please, no, no bowing is necessary at all. We're all in independent territory, and uh, and it, it, it's my very great pleasure to meet you. Now, let me see if my uh, my powers of insight have not yet failed me. I have I have noticed, and, and you have informed me that you're of Clan Salubri, and you appear to be dressed in some kind of scrubs. Would I? Suggest that you're a, uh, a healer of some sort? The, um, it's it's actually a jumpsuit, not to correct a whip. Oh, Apologies. I, I Those, sorry, the Camarilla etiquette is was ingrained pretty hard in me early on. Um, no, it's, uh, it's an EMT uniform. I used to work events like this, maintain the masquerade, send help to Kendrick and kind of they needed. So yeah, a healer would probably be 
an accurate term. Maybe a little righteous. Well, what a marvelous way to spend one's existence. I can't tell whether you're being sarcastic or not. I get that a lot, if you believe me. But no, uh, entirely sincere. You, you simply make people better. I wish I could say the same of myself. Regrettably, that is not within my gift. Is that by choice? And that third eye is dialed in right now. Her two are polite, but the third eye is like, oh, here we go. May I ask you a quick question? Of course. Before I answer your, which eye do you prefer to be looked in? Uh, these two would probably be. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, I, I find sometimes it's better to ask a, a simple question of etiquette rather than to make the wrong move. No, I sincerely appreciate you asking. Thank you. That was actually really sweet. I wish more kindred did that. My, uh, well, I found it to a certain extent our decisions are made for us by the blood that runs through our veins. So uh, as a member of Clan Malkavian, uh, I don't have any, uh, none of the powers of the blood help me with healing. But I do, well, I flatter myself, you see, and you, you'll have to, uh, you'll have to indulge me in my vanity. I do attempt sometimes to help to heal the problems of those around me, specifically those in Clan Malkavian who suffer somewhat um, uh, through the affliction of their blood. But uh, it would be very grand of myself to call myself a healer. No, I, I have great admiration uh, for those of you who dedicate your lives to it, especially a paramedic indeed. You, uh, you see the worst. And uh, unlike, say, a surgeon, you're not uh, enumerated with flat screen TVs and uh, lavish belongings. A flat screen TV is still a thing. Have I dated myself? No, nope, you're, you're, you, you have. Yes, you, you've definitely dated yourself, but those are, those are still a thing. Thank you for that. I feel uncomfortably seen, and I appreciate you taking the time to actually say that to me. Thank you, especially from a, a kindred of your, of your status. I genuinely appreciate it. Thank you. Ah, well, not much status here, as Ram has reminded me, because we are, of course, in independent territory. Oh, <gasps> they did not. Oh, indeed. <gasps> what did they say? Well, let me let me paint you a picture of the conversation that I, I had with Ram. Ram <laughs> told me that uh, I could be assured that everything that they did uh, from now on was uh, was pure of heart, because after all, I have no power over them at all. <gasps> yes, indeed. As a you know, as a, a mere Malkavian elder of some six hundred years. Her jaw is genuinely open. All three of her eyes have your complete and full attention right now. Even the third eye that doesn't like you, she has her hand over her mouth and she goes, they did not, they did not, they did not. While you were on the it's, boat, this just happened? Oh, this, this this just happened indeed. You have the very latest gossip. You're the first person to hear it. Oh this. my gosh. But I will confess I have a certain affection for Rob. So, uh, well... So I am, as I mentioned, of, of Clan Malkavian. I'm I'm used to some. Uh, I'm used to dealing with characters, you know, people who come in a very strong flavor. That would definitely be the word: character, personality, flavor. Yeah, personality. Yeah, indeed. Wow, wow. So, uh, but bore it no mind at all. But I was pleased to be put in my place because I spend much of my time in a theater that I own, of course. So uh, everyone there is, is very nice to me and indeed perhaps makes me feel like I am I'm a powerful, and as, as the youth say, cool figure. Yep, you just dated yourself again, but that's okay. But now to be in a situation where I'm merely part of the crowd is, uh, well, as an actor, I think it, it can only help to mingle with those who are from a different strata of society to you and indeed to be treated as one of them. This is a new role. And uh, and uh, I can't say I find it a displeasurable one at present. And she crosses her arms over her chest and throws her uh, hip to one side, which is obviously a shift in how comfortable she's immediately grown. And she says, humility looks good on you. Why, thank you very much, Monica. Uh, may I call you Monica? You may. And if you will excuse me, I... Um, I would like to hunt down my Baron, and uh, I haven't actually gotten 
a full scope of the ship. But if, if I see you again, I, I would love the opportunity to spend more time with you this evening. Thank you so much. Uh, give uh, the Baron my regards. Uh, of course. I hope I'll, I'll be talking to him before too long. But uh, enjoy the evening. A very great pleasure to talk to you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And she'll bow and she'll skirt around and then she'll stop and she has to ask, they really told you? Oh, indeed. Yes. They actually said that to you. Oh, 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 quite. Yes. Ah, Chase is going to love this. And she scurries off down the hall. So, Monica, you run off down the hallway, Sir, Sir Roger. Uh, you you heard that there were a couple salubri in San Francisco, but you'd never actually seen them. So this was an interesting encounter for you, perhaps. Interesting. Something to file away for later. So, Marcus and Katerina, as you're making the rounds, uh, a very, very attractive looking Toreador, even more so than normal for Toreador. You assume this is another member of the Temple of Michael, just because of the way their teeth glint in the moonlight when they smile the way Roms do now. Uh, comes up and, and gives you a very grand eloquent bow, Katarina. This can't go badly at all. Nope. Pleasure seeing you here, Ms. Bogdanovich. Do I know this Toreador? You're not sure? You don't know you, the entirety of your clan in San Francisco? And this one does not look familiar. All right, that's fair. Uh, they're dressed in very tight leather pants and an open v-neck white shirt kind of pirate style with the puffy sleeves and the the lace up and they give you a roguish wink are you enjoying the party so far there are not that many toriador on the boat oh i was thinking it was going to be just an ordinary party until i saw you marcus you just see this young toriador come up and start flirting with katarina very outrageously seems pretty par for the course of the clan yeah, she see, she seems a little put out by it, or at least a little uncomfortable. <laughs> Wildly uncomfortable. Okay. I take a measure of the person in front of me and try to discern perhaps their intentions beyond the physical, which is fairly clear. You don't know this person, Marcus. They're just, they look like a very young Toreador, not just young physically, but young in general. And they don't seem to be paying you any attention either. They're all focused on Katarina. So it doesn't seem like they're putting on a show for you, as far as you can tell. I trust Miss Bogdanovich is capable of shooing away some people. That's not hard. I have seen it firsthand, as um, uh, her interactions previously with Rom have proven to be um, quite capable. They take your hand and kiss it, Katarina. And so uh, it was such a disappointment to learn that we were no longer going to be able to appreciate your work from Dragonfly Confections. Will you be setting up shop in your new lo- new location? No. Oh, to rob the world of such delicious delights. At least we still have you. Well, I'm sure that you can find your own delights on board, yeah? I have preoccupations I must attend to, and I'm I'm fucking gone. <laughs> they look very nonplussed and a bit disappointed as you just push past them. Slightly brokenhearted, maybe. And you hear behind you, Marcus, there's a group of three or four vampires just start laughing and Katarina doesn't notice this but it looks like this Toreador's friends are laughing at him oh so perhaps he was ah, perhaps he was put up to this and he just sort of dejectedly traipses back over to the group I'll grin just slightly and, and continue my forward momentum so Katarina you brush past this young Toreador and keep going and Marcus follows up behind you a moment later and you still haven't seen Alex around you know they're here somewhere you just don't know where but they should be making the rounds I'm a little less concerned about that and more concerned about finding like some place that's not quite in the crush of people like a deck that is outside well 
the boat is pretty crowded anywhere you go just because it's a party and also anywhere you go you've got ghouls who are offering you things you've got very flirtatious humans winking at you batting their eyelashes all sorts of things at both you and marcus but no one as forward as that young toreador was so at least there's that but you see rom making the rounds up ahead of you marcus so rom what do you do when you make the rounds at your party how how do you how do you host this particular party well i, I need to check in with all of the ghouls make sure that they are safe being taken care of and that nobody has committed any party fouls or violations of let's say consent upon them i'm very protective of my many many ghouls and then i make eye contact with each of the important figures share a couple of words and of course like you say keep an eye out for mr boss boss well uh, as you glad hand so to speak and have a chat with some of your fellow malkavians who are just sort of hanging around one of them is telling the fortune uh, of a line of ghouls other people's ghouls not yours who've come up and are having their palms read uh, you know just normal things you see Baron Voss and Katarina come around uh, onto this deck into the outside get some fresh air. Marcus, how are you doing? Rom, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. I want to let you know now that we're underway, I had a couple of moments if you'd like to say a couple of words to the audience. I have access to the one MC over here and we can uh put you on if you'd like. What is your party? If you'd like me to address the crowd, I can. Absolutely. We have. I want to let you know. Just before we left the port, the Malkavian whip, Mr. Hammers, Malkavian whip has entered our boat space he's here and just keeping you informed as always you're not suggesting that something would be done to sir roger are you no no that is not what i'm suggesting at all i'm letting you know this is not elysium so i wouldn't put it past the other side from conducting shenanigans so i'm just letting you know what the guest list looks like well, certainly and as a purveyor and host of the party you'll ensure the guest's safety right i will do everything within my power but I have learned my limits. I highly doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing my best to learn my limits. Certainly a fair statement. All right. On with speeches. So, I'm going to go ahead and get myself over to a comms station and I'll go ahead and open up a lovely sound line to the rest of the people on the boat and once it's open giving a wink over to Casper my ever faithful AV tech I will say welcome this evening gods and monsters to the spear of michael I am so happy you are having a good night. This is your captain speaking. I have a special treat for you. Won't take up too much of your time and you can get on with the rest of your shenanigans in just a moment. But first, I have a very special guest. 
I would like to say just a couple of words. So may I please introduce to you the Baron, the Boss Voss himself, Marcus. I'll step over with a slight raised eyebrow toward Rom at the public uttering of Boss Voss, which I was not prepared for, and say uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us at uh, one of our first uh, official gatherings here in the San Francisco Free City. Uh, We do appreciate your attendance. I understand that Ram has made all manner of um, delicacies and uh, party favors available, and we hope that you have a good time. I'll pass the microphone back to Ron. A man of few but poignant words. As I sign off to all of the rest of you and see you around on the party, may I wish you the best of nights. And I'll turn the mic off. Alex, you hear this uh, <laughs> little speech from both of them over the over all the noise and cacophony that just sort of dies down as soon as the loudspeakers start up. So you can hear it even from your from your room. That was interesting. Yeah. But there's a there's a knock on your door oh. as the speech concludes. Okay, I got to get my eye rolling out of the way. I'll get up and open the door. Just a crack. <laughs> you see Leonora, who is one of the La Sombra, but is also a member of the Temple of Michael. She's the only one from Clan La Sombra who is. Uh, but she just sort of waves at you and says, uh, thought I'd find you in here. Captain Rom, she rolls her eyes, uh, said you had a room down here. Where have you been? We were looking for you. It's it's great night. It normally would be, yes. Come on. You can't be burying yourself away on Valentine's night. Uh... I lost two family members tonight. Oh. Not that family. The chosen family. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I was like, what happened? Uh, okay. Well, uh, I guess if you don't want company, I just I just wanted to make sure you were okay. Uh, do, do you need anything? I can bring you something. I can put a sign on the door that says, do not disturb. No, I'll, I'll make it out eventually. Uh, okay. I just... Need to collect myself, you know? Nobody needs to see this mess. <laughs> Even though Alex looks like perfectly put together. <laughs> if this is what you call a mess, Alex dear, I'm not sure I'm not sure I want to know what it looks like when you're in a catastrophe. And she just sort of smiles. And there there's a threesome that just kind of pushes past you. They're all giggling. It's one vampire with a human on each arm uh, and they're all laughing and the humans look slightly drunk uh, as does the vampire a little bit. Uh, And they go into a room and slam the door shut and you hear more giggling. You know what? Why don't we go have a drink? There we go. That's the Alex I know. Sure. And I will uh, have her, you know, offer her my arm and we'll go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she takes your arm. She's wearing this very tight fitted black dress with silver ripples on it that sort of move in the play of the light as she walks. And she's pointing out to you all the interesting people who've shown up tonight. And she says, we even got the Malkavian whip tonight. Oh. Yeah. And the Salubri are here too. Both of them. What a night, huh? Yeah. Also interesting. I don't I don't dislike any of those people, so uh I guess that's okay. It's a great party. Like I said, it'll cheer you up. Rom learned from the best, so mm, yes, we do need to get him back to the temple though, at least once or twice. You know, he hasn't been in a, like a month and a half. Oh, well, I'll make sure he goes. Electra's been wondering. And she just sort of licks her lips suggestively. Yeah, uh, she might have to be a little heartbroken on that one, but we'll see. She'll get over it. Yeah, <laughs> she'll find somebody else. And she uh, leads you upstairs 
onto the onto the deck, fresh air, and you do see, in fact, Sir Roger walking around. What is Sir Roger doing at this point? As he's he, you've just heard uh, Rom and Marcus have a few words over the airways. Uh, he's discussing theatre with a leather leather daddy. So you are speaking to one of the Oakland Bears, one of the Bruja. Uh, his, his he goes by Doc. It's emblazoned on the back of his leather jacket, which he has since removed. He's a he's a very tall, very jolly looking bear, and uh, he's very engaged with you on the finer points of stage combat. When it comes when it comes to staging seventeenth and eighteenth century plays. I, I remain fascinated by by your insights, Doc. I I have a, a perhaps a request to make. Anything, anything. What is it? Well, you seem perhaps I'm overstating myself. Something of an expert in stage combat. Perhaps you would engage with me in some mischief. He strokes a bit of his mustache, and his eyes just kind of dance. A little bit. Mischief's my middle name, Sir Roger. Well, actually, it's Bartholomew, but that's beside the point. What did you have in mind? Well, perhaps we should have a fight, have a terrible disagreement in front of everyone, and amaze them with our mastery of stage combat. He cracks his knuckles, and he takes his shirt off, and he's just wearing these tight leather pants and suspenders, uh, and he says, Let's go. Uh, well, first, first we we must set the we must set the 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 scene. So I will. Uh, so uh, I say, look, you you ragamuffin. Just because we were lovers once before does not mean that you can treat me in such a way, Doc of the Bears. And he draws himself up to his full height. He's about six four, and uh, he puts his hands on his hips and says. You rapscallion, Sir Roger. You know it was all your fault. Brute. Indeed. Immediately to blaming the victim. So typical of you, Doc. But indeed, Doc is rather an ironic name. Because doctors tend to make people feel better. Whereas you, sir, have made me feel sad. Oh, really? (coughs) You don't act sad. Even William Shakespeare could act more sad than you. (laughs) 